We'd like to welcome everyone to another edition of our Orthodox Bible Study Program, uh, coming to you from uh, here at St. Nicholas in Warren, Ohio. And we welcome you uh, uh, to uh, this uh, particular program. Over the past few weeks, we uh, had uh, some personal time and other activities, but we're back again now, and we're glad to have you. Uh, as, as is our custom, uh, we're going to ask that everyone join us in prayer for, uh, before the reading of Holy Scripture. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O Master who loves mankind, illumine our hearts with the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to understand the teachings of your gospel. Instill in us also the fear of your blessed commandments, that we may overcome all carnal desires, entering upon a spiritual life, and understanding and acting in all things according to your holy will. For you are the enlightenment of our souls and bodies, O Christ God, and to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father, your all-holy, gracious, and light-creating Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Uh, glory be to Jesus Christ. Uh, we have been for uh, uh, the several months now, uh, studying the very first book of the uh, scripture, uh, the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, the first book of the, of, uh, the Bible, and uh, especially the Old Testament. And we are uh, going to continue. Uh, we are at chapter 33, verse 1. Those of you who are following by way of the Orthodox Study Bible, which I'm using, is on page 44. Uh, and those of you who have another edition, as I said, this is Genesis chapter 33, verse 1. If you remember the last time that uh, we were together, we were talking about the very famous uh, battle, uh, uh, this uh, wrestling, if you will, between the patriarch Jacob uh, and the angel. And uh, as I said before, uh, this angel is uh, a pre-incarnate form of Jesus, the Son of God, uh, that he is wrestling with. And he wrestles with uh, this angel all night long uh, to the point of exhaustion. And um, uh, one of the things that uh, I appreciate very much about this is that we, uh, at many times in our lives, wrestle with God uh, to know his will or to understand his will. Uh, and especially when we are in conflict, when we want our way and, and uh, of course, uh, his way, uh, we run into conflict. And uh, we have to also be able to point out here that Jacob did not give up, uh, that he wrestled with God. And uh, the scripture tells us that he would not stop until the angel blessed him. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, as an act of humility uh, because Jacob had asked uh, to know the name and uh, the name was not to be given. Uh, again, the ancient understanding that by having a name would be a way of manipulating someone else. Uh, for instance, uh, I have a new dog, a fox terrier uh, that I've inherited <laughs> uh, against my better judgment. And, um, uh, I, you know, whenever uh, I want him to come to me, I call him. Uh, and, and the dog comes. And to go and get your toy, the dog goes and gets his toy and so forth, Lamont. Uh, this is the same kind of idea that within the name there was some kind of a mystical entity that it meant that they wanted to be able to uh, understand the intimacy, the ins and outs of God which is an act of impiety. And by naming them, uh, having the name uh, in the pagan faith, uh, their culture was as such, the worship was such, that the pagan gods, uh, they would properly pronounce their name, they would do the proper ritual, and the people believed that they could maneuver the gods to do whatever they wanted. This is something that the God of Israel will not permit Okay, and as a way of uh, humbling him, uh, as a way of uh, keeping him humble, uh, to know the proper relationship, the angel strikes his hip 
and from then on he begins to uh, begins to limp. In fact, to this day, uh, as the scripture even says, the children of Israel do not eat uh, the meat of any animal from 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 uh, that particular muscle uh, as a remembrance of the fact uh, that their patriarch Jacob uh, became uh, uh, became lame uh, as a result, and uh, it further shows us that that we too uh, must wrestle with God. And there are times when uh, he will humble us and we accept it uh, in humility uh, because everything that God does is for uh, our salvation. And we're going to see this uh, in play as we go into the 33rd chapter. Uh, please follow along with me. It says, verse 1, now Jacob le lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau his brother was coming, and four hundred men with him. Now if you remember, uh, it was Jacob who tricked uh, Esau, uh, and uh, as a result, uh, Esau became very angry and swore to uh, be able to uh, take revenge, uh, to be able to get even with him uh, for robbing him of his ancestral right and his privilege, uh, and thereby having him being sent into the wilderness. Uh, although this was happening, uh, God still favored him. He made him the father of many nations, of a great nation. The Arabic nation to this day uh, claim them to be the father. And as a result, um, uh, he, bring, he comes, he brings this entourage, uh, and an entourage uh, was as big as befit your dignity. So the 400 men meant that he was a very strong, he was very uh, successful, very powerful, and he brings this entourage in order to meet his, uh, uh, his brother. And uh, as a result, uh, Jacob was, lived in fear of Esau that someday uh, he would take advantage of him and he would uh, get even with him or uh, to seek revenge, uh, if you will, uh, as to what uh, Jacob unjustly did, okay? Although it was in accordance with permission of God, but still uh, an injustice that was done to him. And the scripture says, so Jacob divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maidservants, then he put the maidservants and their sons in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph, uh, and, and, and Rachel and Joseph uh, uh, last. He then crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Uh, this progressive bowing is a way of showing utter respect and also uh, a way of, uh, of, of showing one's servitude uh, to another person. If you recall maybe from movies or books that you have read concerning uh, the Orient and their culture and their history, uh, one always bowed low to the ground when someone came in uh, the presence of their sovereign. In fact, to look at them in the face was uh, something that was forbidden, uh, and you were unworthy to do that. So therefore, by bowing uh, seven times repeatedly uh, until uh, his brother comes before him is an ultimate act of humility and uh, a way of, of showing his servitude, if you will, a, a type of repentance, uh, if you will. In fact, we as Orthodox Christians uh, before we venerate the Holy Shroud of the Lord of the Panagia, or before we, um, you know, uh, uh, some traditions before they even receive the Eucharist, one bowed to the ground to show your servitude. So therefore, um, he uh, comes uh, before him, and he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times. But Esau ran to meet him, embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and he wept. Wow, uh, what an unexpected thing that has happened. Uh, we see that by his fidelity to his belief and the willingness to allow himself to change 
uh, that he meets his brother and he forgives him uh, even before anything is said, uh, embracing him, hugging him, kissing him. Uh, in this uh, semi, uh, Semite uh, culture, uh, these were acts of, of, of love and devotion to another person. Uh, it, was a, it was an act uh, of also unity to be able to kiss each other. Uh, in fact, even the Apostle Paul talks about this many times in his writings, uh, especially when he finishes and, and, and sends greetings and felicitations to other people. And uh, he will say, make sure that you greet each other with the holy kiss. Okay? Uh, the kiss of peace. Uh, in fact, even liturgically in our churches, uh, in many traditions, uh, right uh, before the, uh, the anaphora, uh, at the, um, uh, uh, the reading of, uh, of the creed, uh, we exchange the, the, the kiss of peace. Uh, and unfortunately, in many of our cultures, only the clergy and the altar uh, perform this uh, ritual. Uh, although in the ancient church, uh, everyone exchanged the kiss of peace. Uh, maybe not literally, you kind of passed it on, if you will. But it was necessary that this kiss of peace be exchanged to show the reconciliation and to show the depth of that reconciliation and forgiveness, mutual forgiveness. Uh, and this is to the credit of Esau. And pointed to the point, it pushed him to the point of the fact that he wept. Uh, whenever one uh, realizes uh, the awful things that have happened in the past and, and the atrocities that have happened and the injustices, uh, when we enter into the state of forgiveness with those people, it brings us to tears. In fact, the fathers of the church teach us that uh, once we are baptized, uh, the way to be forgiven of future sins is by the baptism of tears. Uh, by uh, our weeping, we wash our conscience clean, if you will, just as we were washed in the waters of baptism from the filth of sin. Then he lifted his eyes and saw the women and children, and he said, Who are these with you? And he replied, The children God mercifully has given to your servant. Uh, we notice here the piety of even the patriarch. Uh, acknowledging that everything that he has is a gift from God. Uh, this is what we are called upon to be. This is called proper stewardship. What is proper stewardship? Uh, not only taking care of something that you have been entrusted with, okay, but uh, in this scriptural passage, we see even a deeper understanding in that acknowledging that we are nothing before the eyes of God. And everything that we have, we do not receive as a result of our own accomplishment. We do not receive this as a result of anything we have done or anything said. We are not deserving of it, but they are gifts from God. And how often we forget that our wives and our children are gifts from God. In fact, in the Slavic tradition, whenever there is a baptism of an infant, uh, the custom is uh, after the uh, baptism and all the rites of baptism and uh, after what is called the rite of initiation or the rite of churching, when the candidate is taken to the back and brought and introduced formally to the church and churched, acknowledged as being a part of the church and property of the church, uh, the priest uh, takes the child uh, around the altar and places them on the solia, on the floor, to which the parents uh, now go and, 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 and take the child to themselves. It is a way of showing uh, this young couple that this child is not yours. You are not the, uh, it is not a biolo biological entity, or at least solely a biological entity of the both of you, but it is actually, it belongs to God. And you are given this child, uh, and the responsibility of properly caring for that child in behalf of God, and in honor of God, and it is given to you as a gift. Everything that we have is a gift. In fact, I love very much 
the prayer at the end of the Divine Liturgy. It's called the prayer of the Amvon. That says, uh, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down through the Father of light. You see, everything is a gift uh, of God. So therefore, uh, properly, Jacob acknowledges this as a purely a gift from God. Then the maidservants came near, and they and their children, and also they bowed down. Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Rachel and Joseph uh, came uh, near, and they also bowed down as a way of showing their humility. Then Esau said, What are these things to you? All this company I meet. So he said, That your servant might find grace in the sight of God. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. But Jacob replied, If I have more uh, if I have now found grace in your sight, receive the present from my hand, inasmuch as I have seen your face, as though someone might see the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Uh, there is a certain beauty to this segment of Scripture. What is happening is that Jacob is acknowledging not only these gifts that are given, but now he gives a gift to his brother. Uh, it was considered uh, only proper, in fact, even in our Slavic culture, and I'm sure it's a part of uh, many cultures, whenever you come to visit someone, you bring a gift as a token of esteem, uh, as a way of showing appreciation for the friendship or the, 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 the family relationship or whatever it might be that exists before you. So therefore, this is brought before him, and, and uh, it is as a gift uh, that has been given. And uh, uh, the uh, acknowledgement of the blessing that has come because of God. Receive my blessing I brought you, because God has shown me mercy, and I have enough. Thus he urged them, and he took it. Then Esau said, let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows the children are weak, and the flocks and the herds with me are giving birth. If therefore the men should drive them now one day, all the cattle would die. Let my Lord go on already before me, ahead before me, my, his servant, and I will lead on slowly to a place the children are able to bear until I come to my Lord in Seir. Then Esau said, Let me leave with, your, with you some of the people with me. But he said, What need is, is, is there? Uh, it is enough that I found grace in my Lord's sight. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. Uh, it was uh, another offer of friendship, another familiarity, to which the response was given uh, that the reconciliation is enough. Uh, there is no need uh, for the gift. Then Jacob journeyed to Sekoth and built houses and made booths for his cattle. Therefore he called the name of that place Sukoth. Then Jacob came safely to Salem, a city of Shechem, in the land of Cana, when he came from Mesopotamia of Syria, and he took up a position in front of the city. Then he brought the parcel of land where he pitched his tent from Haman, Shechem's father, for a hundred, uh, a hundred uh, male uh, lambs. There he set up an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. Uh, the place that he goes uh, is a place that will be the end of, end of his journey. And he offers a, a place not only to, to house his cattle, to keep them safe, to be protected uh, from not only the elements, but any other possible danger. 
And he builds a, a house, a, a better way of understanding it, is that he builds an altar to the Lord. And he offers uh, thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, it is also important to be able to note that he, he uh, offers uh, the lamb, the offering of the lamb. Uh, in fact, uh, the, this offering of the lamb, we see even a prefigurement of the perfect offering of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world, who would be the ultimate means of our reconciliation with not only each other, but also with him. So, uh, therefore, uh, the first thing to do is to offer proper praise to God and to call upon his name. And, and what do we mean by this call upon his name? To acknowledge him, uh, to praise him, uh, to, to, to thank him, and most importantly, to worship him and to acknowledge that it is he from which all these other things have come. Let's continue on in verse 30, uh, chapter uh, 34. And we're going to talk about Dinah, which is uh, one of the daughters of Leah. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. But when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, a ruler of the land, saw her, he took her and laid with her and violated her. Uh, we see in uh, the uh, sacred scripture um, not only the beauty uh, that life bears, but we also see uh, the evil uh, that life bears. Uh, along the most holy uh, are also the most evil. And we see this atrocity that is done to Dinah, uh, being a young girl, uh, being a beautiful woman, uh, because women were possessions, things to be dominated. Uh, this particular person, uh, Shechem, uh, actually violates her. He, he rapes her. And the indication here uh, that uh, it is a rape of violence, not that any other kind of rape isn't violent, but it's exceptionally violent. Now his soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and sought to win her heart. Then Shechem no spoke to his father Hammer, saying, Give this young woman as a wife for me. And Jacob heard Hamor's son had had defiled Dana his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field. So Jacob held his peace, and they came. Then Hamor the father of Shechem went out to Jacob to speak with him. Now the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it, and the men were stoned and, and were exterminated, the, the, the men were uh, stunned and extremely grieved because he had done a despicable thing to Israel in laying with his Jacob's daughter, something that should never have happened. But Hamor spoke to them, saying, My son Shechem is passionately in love with your daughter. He gave her to him as a wife. Make marriage with us. Give us your daughters and take our daughters for your sons. Dwell among us, and behold, the land before you is spacious. Dwell therein, and trade, and acquire possessions within it. This hospitality is being extended. Uh, the uh, Dinah is offered to, um, uh, to, uh, to Shechem as a, a, a wife, and uh, as a way of appeasement, as a way of seeking forgiveness and reconciliation, uh, not only is the daughter Dinah given to him, but also uh, there uh, is a, a, uh, uh, an act of, 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 of being able to be reconciled, uh, that a proper marriage should result of it, and uh, that they should inherit the land, and that they would be able to be free to be able to live within the land. And whatever they do within the land, uh, their herds and, and the profit that they get, that they could keep it. Then Shechem said to uh, her father and to her brothers, Let me find grace in your eyes, 
and we will give whatever you ask. Make the dowry as great as you wish, and I will give it. Only give me this young woman as a wife. Uh, whenever a uh, woman was given in marriage, there was an endowment that would a a a, 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 uh, uh, a dowry that that would be paid uh, to the family, and uh, he is willing to give whatever amount. Uh, anything is worth uh, receiving uh, this beautiful woman as a wife to be reconciled, to be with her, and to keep her and to preserve her, and uh, to be able to uh, to uh, honor her. Uh, this dowry is is whatever it will be determined. So uh, therefore, the sons of Jacob answered Shechem, and Hamor his father, and spoke deceitfully to them, because they had defiled Dana their sister. So Simeon and Levi, the brothers of Dana, and the sons of Leah, said to them, We cannot do these things to give our sister to a man who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition will we consent to you, if you will become as we are, and every male of you is to be circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughters, and we will be gone. What is happening is that the sons of Jacob are using a holy and sacred thing which is circumcision. And if you remember when we talked about the circumcision uh, in, in the past chapters, the circumcision was a vital way of showing one's fidelity to the covenant that God made with Abraham. Uh, that the foreskin should be uh, offered, and by this uh, one would pledge their allegiance uh, to God. And uh, they would show their solidity uh, with and devotion to God. So therefore, uh, they used this holy and sacred rite that was ordered by God in order to make them uh, his people now as a way of tricking and even getting even uh, with these men who uh, defiled their sister, who raped their sister. So uh, therefore, this condition is given that either they submit uh, to their demand of circumcision or or not. And if they do not, then they would leave, that there would be no intimacy, there would be no uh, agreement between them. Uh, this reminds me uh, of what will happen later, uh, centuries later, in the Acts of the Apostles, where there was a, a huge dissension between what would be called the Judaizers and the Hellenists, or the Greeks. Uh, the Judaizers are saying that before a Gentile could be a member of the church, that they had to adhere completely to the law of Moses, which included circumcision. And uh, that was spearheaded and, and uh, was a part of the belief of, of Peter. Uh, however, uh, the Apostle Paul believed that in order to be Christian, uh, one did not have to submit to circumcision, but rather it was based on faith, faith in Jesus as to who he was. And they would enter the church through baptism. And as a result, there was a division to which an apostolic council was called in which after consultation uh, by the invoking of the Holy Spirit, as Peter says, it is good to the Holy Spirit and to us that they should be received by their faith, not circumcision. Uh, and um, so therefore, uh, it is uh, the faith uh, that justifies. It is the faith that purifies. And we, be see, we begin seeing uh, the inner disposition of what it means to be circumcised, to believe in God with one's complete body, soul, mind, and strength one's faith and now they take a sacred thing and they use it to trick other people to seek their revenge 
Now their words please Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. So the young men did not de uh, delay to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter, and he was the most esteemed of all those in his father's house. And Hamor and Shechem his sons came to the gates of their city and spoke with the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us. Therefore let, uh, let them dwell in the land and trade in it, for indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us, to be one people. If every, if every male among us is circumcised, as they are circumcised, will not their livestock, their property, and even animals of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. Thus all who went out of the gate of their city uh, heeded Haman and Shechem, his sons, and every male was circumcised within the flesh. Now it came to pass on the third day, when there were, they were in pain, two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dana's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all of the males. They also killed Hamar and Shechem, his son with the edge of the sword, and took Dana from Shechem's house and went out. Then the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and uh, uh, blundered the city, plundered the city in which Dana, their sister, had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, and what was in the city, and what was in the field they took captive, all their wives, their children, and then servants, and plundered whatever was in the city, and in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You made me an object of hatred, so as, he, uh, so as to be evil to all the inhabitants of this land, both among the Canaanites and also the Presidians. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against us, and kill me, and I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, Should he tread, uh, treat our sister as a prostitute? What happens here is that um, the uh, sons of uh, the brothers of, uh, of Dana, the sons of Jacob, seek to take revenge. Uh, which is not a prerogative of them or something that they should have in, in, in participated in because, as the scripture says, revenge belongs to God. It is up to God to decide who shall be punished and who shall not be punished. Furthermore, this action was a means of repentance for these native people for Shechem and, 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 uh, and Hamar and, their, and, and these people. Uh, and it was to be intended to be a source of making even a greater people, uh, of bringing more into the family of God, uh, something that was noble, to which they responded by killing all of these men. Uh, these men were killed at the height of their pain. Uh, circumcision for a child uh, was something that may be tolerated, but for an older man, uh, it was something that was very painful. Uh, there was no anesthesia, okay? Uh, so therefore, uh, they, took, he was take, they were taken advantage at a time when they were weak and they were defenseless, and they were in this condition of preparing themselves to enter into this relationship with God, to be a, a people. It shows us uh, that we are not to uh, seek revenge. In fact, there is an old Asian custom that says that 
uh, he who uh, wants to seek revenge must first dig two graves. One for the person they will take revenge on, and second for themselves, you see. Uh, it is only God's uh, authority that decides who will live and who will die. And uh, uh, it is not the responsibility of man to make that decision. Uh, furthermore, it is a misunderstanding of the law of God. How many times have we heard an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? In fact, even Jesus uh, brings up uh, this uh, understanding. And a lot of times, uh, most people interpret this as, as being able or, or having the right to be able to take revenge. Uh, taking revenge means to take everything that that other person has to offer. But the law of God, the original law as it was written, as it was interpreted, as it was meant, was only a way of justice. You can only take an eye for an eye. You can only take a tooth for a tooth. You were not entitled to nothing more. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, so therefore, uh, by killing and slaying all of these men at their weakest part, uh, they were actually seeking revenge. Uh, they were dishonoring God. And most especially, they were dishonoring their father. And as a result, uh, and rightly so, Jacob lived in fear that now the inhabitants would take revenge against him and he would be no more. Because, remember, to take advantage of, of Jacob would mean that somehow this laid an opportunity for other people to usurp the authority of God by, by making his people the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that they were actually destroying that possibility. Uh, they were destroying any kind of hope of, of salvation for the entire world, which was originally what God had intended. They are cutting short by a mean of sinful uh, arrogance and a sinful violence to take into hand something that only is to be done by God. So therefore, they, they threatened actually their own survival. You see, and for the will of God to be seen and the will of God to be done uh, upon the earth. Uh, they returned evil for evil and they took the law into their own hands. Uh, how many times have we seen in, in the history of our, of our country and in, in the history of the world uh, this uh, idea of, of taking the law in our own hands? and claiming that to be justice. And it never is. And we see the perfect example, and we see the beginnings of the understanding of that sin here. You see? Uh, there is uh, no such thing as a vigilante. Uh, there is to be no uh, taking of the law into our own hands. Because when we succumb to mob rule, what happens is uh, we become... Uh, a, a nation of, of, uh, of, of, of division. Uh, what happens is that chaos now prevails. So therefore, we see even within this, uh, this uh, passage of Scripture a need for a law to be written by God by which man would be able to live by in order for them to know the difference between right and wrong. Thus, the commandment that will be given by Moses, written by the finger of God, thou shalt not kill, you see. Uh, thou shalt not take revenge, you see. Uh, you will not take innocent life. Uh, it is not uh, construed as an eye for an eye for any a, 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 a uh, ability to take anything you want and do anything you want. That's simply not in the prerogative of man. And to pillage the, the city, uh, they took things that were not theirs. As, a demand, as, a, as another way of demanding uh, their revenge. Uh, although this was a common practice of the ancient people, 
uh, after uh, uh, a city was defeated to rob and pillage. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, in a more modern time, uh, this was referred to as being able to take booty. Have you ever rem you remember that, especially during the time of the Civil War? In fact, uh, in uh, many instances in the ancient world, this was the way that soldiers were paid. They were allowed to steal from those people that they conquered and be able to use it for their own means, their own wealth. You see? Uh, now, this is what the, the, the sons of Jacob are succumbing to. They're no different than the evil people of the world that they are called upon to convert, to show a different way of life, and to enter into union with each other and also with God. They make impossible now God's will to be done. So therefore, um, there uh, has to be uh, a law that will be given uh, uh, by, by uh, God himself. Uh, we're going to stop here so that we don't go into the next chapter, which is rather long, uh, and more items to be able to discuss. Uh, as in the past, if you have any uh, questions or would like to share anything, please uh, email me. I'll be glad to hear from you. It's always good to hear from you. And we invite you to join us again uh, uh, next week uh, for another edition of our uh, uh, Bible study, Orthodox Bible study uh, uh, classes here at St. Nicholas in Warren, Ohio. We encourage you to come, join us, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your neighbors and let us together study God's Word. We're going to end uh, this class in the traditional way by offering the hymn to the Most Holy Mother of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are truly, de oh, have, you are truly deserving of glory, O birth giver of God. The ever-blessed and most pure Mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, who as a virgin gave birth to God the Word, true birth giver of God, we magnify you. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ.